Well, good morning, channel, and welcome back. The beautiful, amazing Honda Goldwing. I bought this bike December 31st, 2022, so a little over a year ago. Bone stock, and I've added quite a few things to it since then. I thought I would go through what I've added in the hopes that it might help you if you're looking uh, for a solution for something or just want to add some protection or something to your bike. You know, add-ons serve a lot of purpose. Sometimes it's protection, sometimes it's functionality, occasionally it's just uh, looks. So I thought I would go through uh, what I put on here and let you know why I purchased it. Maybe you guys could find something that you didn't realize was out there or might help you in a situation you're having right now. So join me as we walk through everything I've added to this bike. Okay, we'll go through each one of these. And of course, I will have links to where you can find each of these things uh, in the description below. First thing I added, and I, I had these on my VTX 1800, I really loved them. When I picked up this bike, I quickly realized that the foot pegs on the bike were going to be too small for me. I really enjoyed having floorboards, and I wanted to find something that was similar to what I had before. And I settled on these Gold Strike driver footboards. The bike already came with passenger footboards and now the driver footboards sort of match it. Let me show you these Gold Strike footboards. This is the left side floorboard and the right side floorboard. They go very well with the stock passenger floorboards. And almost immediately, I realized, after watching multiple YouTube videos in anticipation of getting this bike, that I was going to need some sort of protection on the bottom of this engine. If you've been around the 18-plus uh, year model Go Wings for any length of time, you have seen uh, videos where there is a vulnerability to the engine below. Uh, something from the road can bounce up, whether it's a log or a piece of metal or a rock. Or you go over a speed bump too fast. I mean, if you hit the bottom of that engine very hard, there is a possibility that you could break off a piece of that engine. And all in that case, all the oil spills out and permanently damages your engine and you have to have the image, in, engine replaced. So I started researching the various options out there for protecting the bottom of these gold wings and I settled on Traction Dynamics belly pants. So pretty much the first thing I bought for this bike was that belly pan protect protection. There's a lot of them out there. This seemed to be fairly easy to install. Pretty rigid to be honest with you. I was impressed with the build. It, it is a little bit of a hassle in that when you need to change the oil or oil filter, you got to take it off, but it's not, it's not a hard thing to do. Uh, so let me show you this Traction Dynamics engine belly pan. All right, here is the Traction Dynamics belly pan. Very sturdy. You can see it's had some wear and tear. Goes in by four flush mounted screws at the front three flush mounted screws at the back. There is a mounting bracket for the front that, bra that uh, bolts directly to the engine and the same for the back. This gives me a lot of peace of mind that something's not going to jump up and break the bottom of that engine. Alright, the next thing I purchased was a ram mount handlebar mount over here on the right hand handlebar. I knew I was going to be doing vlogging and I wanted something I could put ram mount on and connect my one of my GoPros to up here and uh, settle on ram mount. I had used ram mount in the past with my VTX, had good luck with them. I know they're a quality product, so I purchased this uh, ram mount for the right hand handlebar. Let me show you that. 
And here is the right handlebar ram mount device right here. It attaches with these two screws to the existing hardware of the bike and provides the ram mount ball. Purchased separately this ram mount bracket and the Ulanzi connection for my uh, GoPro camera. Anyway, that's the setup for the right handlebar ram mount. Also, for many of these things that I've added to my bike, there is on my channel an installation video. So if you're curious about any of them, go out and search on my channel for the installation video of the accessory. And it might help you, you know, if you buy this, it might help you uh, get it on the bike. Okay, next, similar to the right hand ram mount, I bought a ram mount for the left hand side. This was a little more difficult because you had to take off some of the facing, the fascia, the covering of the handlebar here right up next to the grip. You had to take that off and it's pretty rigid. It doesn't, there's not a lot of play in that. So it was a little more difficult getting it on, but it's just a simple sort of U-clamp on here that bolts down with a ram mount attachment to it and we'll talk about what I've put on that ram mount attachment in just a minute. So here's the close-up of that. For the left handlebar ram mount it's this small device right here. It's got a top U-clip and a bottom U-clip. Uh, you take off some existing plastic that's right here on the bike on the handlebar and there's a little nub you can probably see it right here that this thing has to go past. So you got to buy the small version of this bracket, not the medium version of this bracket. But it also comes with a ram mount ball, uh, which I've attached this wireless charging device to. This thing is just simply my GoPro remote, turns this GoPro on and off remotely while I'm driving. And I've just got it Velcro strapped on here so it's easily accessible. Next, for the trunk, I purchased a trunk mat. It's just a carpet mat. Just lays in the bottom of your trunk. There was nothing there but plastic. And things rolling around and sliding and making noise. So I put a carpet mat in there. It keeps things in place. It's form fitted for the trunk so it fits very nicely. It looks very stylish. Here's a photo of the carpet mat. Here fits perfectly. It's Honda brand. It's made for this. I don't know why on a flagship bike like this that Honda didn't just add it. You know, when you buy the bike, seems like that's pretty simple. But and similar in the trunk, after the carpet mat, I purchased some side organizers so I could just place little things in the trunk, <clears throat> and they wouldn't be just flying around in there willy nilly and coming out when I'm pulling my helmet out and stuff. So there, I purchased organizers for each side of the trunk. Helps me keep things organized. Here's a quick video of that. Here is the trunk organizer that I purchased that mounts to the back of the trunk. I also have, harder to see here, but I have some side mounted storage solutions. This is just a pouch on this side. On the other side, it is some Velcro sort of containers well, mesh containers, I keep a rag and various just small parts. So all around the trunk, I have places where I can keep stuff. Next, and also from Traction Dynamics, you will see that Traction Dynamics makes a lot of good stuff. I'm going to show you a lot of things from them. But next from them, I purchased the kickstand, side stand foot. And what it is, it's just a wider plate for the bottom of your kickstand that creates more of a footprint gives the bike more stability in hot climates where you might be on uh, loose ground or soft asphalt. It creates a bigger footprint uh, so that that kickstand doesn't sink in and maybe you know keeps the bike from tipping over. Here's a, a shot of the, uh, the kickstand foot. All right, from Traction Dynamics, that is the side kickstand foot. You can see it's a lot broader than the standard kickstand foot just gives me a bigger footprint and it bolts right on to the existing side stand. One quick note guys about the uh, side stand foot that you can buy, this broader foot. It attaches to the existing side stand but frequently comes a little loose. 
So I'm constantly having to tighten that up. You can see how it just wiggles back and forth. So I'm going to get an Allen wrench, and there's a couple of screws, and just tighten the sucker back up. Got to do that ever so often. Next, and also from Traction Dynamics, the oil dipstick handle extender. The stock dipstick comes with a screw-off cap that is so low and small and close to the engine that, to be honest with you, you, you almost burn your fingers trying to get it out. So Traction Dynamics makes a very simple to install dipstick extender handle that you can permanently affix on that thing and makes it so much easier for getting the uh, oil dipstick out. Here's that. And now from Traction Dynamics again, that oil dip dipstick handle extension right here. It just allows you to easily get to this oil dipstick, which otherwise you'd be trying to unscrew it from way down here and you burn your burn yourself on the engine parts down here. So you can get a lot higher up here and it just permanently connects to the dipstick and you can unscrew it, pull your dipstick out just like that. And that's what that looks like. Pathfinder is another of one of my favorite manufacturers. They make such great things for the Honda Goldwing. Uh, the first thing I bought from Pathfinder was the power accessory hub. It is underneath the seat and it helps give me a place to attach multiple other things uh, so that I don't have uh, electronics, extra electronics hooked up directly to the CAN bus of the bike. Uh, bypasses all that and uh, protects that CAN bus um, and allows you to hook up multiple things. Unfortunately it's under the seat so I can't show you that but I do have an installation video of putting that in and I will put that link in the description below so you can get to it quickly. Next from Pathfinder LED, I bought these sequential turn lights and cowl lights down below. They're daytime running lights, they're white normally, but if you turn on your turn signal, your hazard lights, they turn orange and they're sequential. They blink with your turn signal sequentially. They light up tremendously well. At night, they create a halo around the bike that provides safety. Really love these lights. Here is a look at those. Okay, now the Pathfinder sequential turn and running light cowl lights. They just bolt right in there and wire up. Now the fog light came with a bike. That I did not add, but these corner lights are these cowl lights that I added. So during the day, like right now, or whenever you're riding, they are a white running light. But when you turn on your turn signal, they become a sequential turn signal. Same for hazard lights. They'll both light up like this if you turn your hazard lights on. Next from Pathfinder, I purchased the rear spoiler on top of this trunk. That is also a daytime running light, a integrated brake light, and sequential turn signal lights, all three things. I bought the chrome version. I thought it looked best on this bike. It comes in chrome or black. Cruiseman has the black version, so you can go check that out. But here's a closer shot of that trunk spoiler. And now from Pathfinder, this rear spoiler for the trunk, which has an integrated running light. Right now I have it set to red. You can also set it to amber for the running light. Um, but it's a third, it is a brake light as well, and when you turn on the turn signals, it becomes a turn signal. Similar to your hazard lights, they'll both blink if your hazards are turned on. Okay, next from manufacturer Keyson, I bought the brake modulator. It's a device that you plug in line to your brake line, and it makes your brake lights modulate as you uh, get on them, which flashing creates visibility and enhances safety. Unfortunately that's under the seat. can't show you a photo of that right now but as I've said before there is a video for that installation so go check it out. The Keyson Tail Blazer Brake Modulator. 
okay similar to the floorboards that I've purchased in the very same style the gold strike brake pedal sort of floorboard pad if you will uh, it just goes on top of your stock brake foot pedal down there and adds some style and matches the running boards uh, also gives it a bigger footprint for your toe to hit when you're slowing down so I like that here's a shot of that here is the gold strike brake pedal cover and you can see it matches perfectly with the floorboards really stylish larger footprint so it's easier to get your foot on really like this it makes it look really nice next this is an interesting install it's the Healy bar handlebar risers these are little devices that go between your handlebars and the bike and they rise it lifts them up by about an inch and also draws them to you a little bit and makes for a more comfortable ride for guys like me that have shorter arms really love this product one of the best things I purchased it was a medium install you know not a simple install but anybody can do it and I have a video on how to do that below here's a photo of those Healy bar risers all right there's a shot of those Healy bar risers this is just a iron piece that's about an inch thick that raises the uh, handlebars up and the holes are at a different mounting position so it angles them bringing the handlebars in towards you slightly next the utopia backrest very easy install you take off the seat you attach the hardware underneath the backrest plugs into the seat and it's fully adjustable up down front ways back ways and has a big pad that supports more of your back really like the utopia backrest so here's a closer shot of that this is the utopia backrest you can flip it back so that you can ride without using it if you want but this bracket is easy it makes it for easy mounting and adjustability you can adjust how high you have different height levels here and then using a screw back here you can adjust you can adjust whether it's closer to you or further back Sorry about the noise out here guys through this video it is Saturday morning and every mowing company is out mowing yards today so we have to talk over that next and this is more aesthetics than anything else I bought pinstripes for the wheels these pinstripes actually they were given to me by cruise man I didn't buy these in this case cruise man had an extra set and he gave them to me thank you cruise man for that but they are the same color as the bike and they enhance the look of the bike so well just take your time putting them on so that you line them up correctly there's great instructions on how to do that so here's a closer look at those wheel pinstripes and guys here are those pinstripes for the front wheel in burgundy matches the bike I really love the aesthetic look of these particular pinstripes I don't normally buy something just for looks on the bike. I usually it has to be some sort of protective or functional device, but these pinstripes are nothing but looks and I really like them. Same pinstripes on the rear tire. And from the Chinese manufacturer Panicle, lower wind deflectors. I used to have the lower and the upper wind deflectors. The upper wind deflectors I really can't recommend they never fit very tight so I took them off but these lower ones have been great these lower ones have a, a movable pane that you can adjust to either push air away from you or in the winter you turn them so that air pushes towards you comes right off the engine radiator warm air and pushes it towards you really love these lower wind deflectors excellent addition to the bike here's a closer shot of those they bolt in directly to the fascia uh, through the existing mounting holes. There's no drilling involved. They're very solid. And there's that pane I was talking about that helps deflect wind towards you or away from you. These work really well. They come in clear and smoke. I love the smoke look. Blends in with the black fascia here on the bike. Very nice addition. Next, for functionality and communications, I bought the Carlin Link 
wireless dongle for this bike. What it does is you plug it up into the USB connection of the bike in the glove box and it will allow your phone to collect, connect wirelessly to the motorcycle. You no longer have to plug your phone in. You know, plugging your phone in and putting the phone in the glove box sometimes causes overheating issues and that was an issue. Plus you can't get to the phone very easily. So I solved that by removing all the wires and that's by buying this Carlin kit wireless dongle and it has worked well for me. There's two kinds. One for Apple and then one that's a dual device for both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's the one I have. I use it for Apple of course but it handles both so um, go look for that. I can highly recommend it. Works well. All right, for the Carlin wireless dongle, I've got it in here. And as I said, it attaches to the bike's USB right here. But this is what it looks like. Just a small device, sits in here permanently, and connects my phone wirelessly to the bike. That's Carlin kit. Next, for safety. I purchased the Vantrue F1 dash cam for motorcycles. It has a 4K front camera and a 1080p rear camera that permanently mounts to the front and back of your bike and records on a micro SD card accessible by your phone through an app video. You turn on the bike, it starts recording and it records as long as the bike is on. You also have the ability to turn it on and off through a uh, control, a wired remote, if you will, that I have mounted up here on the handlebars. I'll be honest with you, I don't ever use the wire remote, wired remote at all because it just does what it needs to do. It turns on when I start the bike. It turns off when I turn the bike off. But for protection purposes, insurance purposes, God forbid something ever happened, but I'll have it on video. And again, that's the Vantrue F1 motorcycle dash cam. Here's a closer picture of those cameras. Alright, the Vantrue motorcycle dash cam has a front facing camera that is 4K. Let's take a closer look at that. There it is. I have it screwed into the underside and 3M taped to the underside of the fairing here on the front. And then in the back, wired under the seat, through the back, drilled a hole right there, brought the cable through, put a grommet in so that it doesn't rub the cable, and mounted it right now with just the 3M tape. But it has the ability to just screw in if it needs to. Very sturdy with this tape, so, so far I'm just going to leave it at that. This rear-facing camera is a 1080p camera, and I've got it mounted to the top of the license plate light plastic cover here. Next, the show chrome rear fender lower trim LED brake and running light. This again was a gift from Cruise Man. Uh, he had it as an extra in his, uh, he was, I think, reviewing the product. He gave it to me. Uh, very appreciative of Cruise Man. But this is a cool little triangular light that goes at the bottom of the back bottom of your bike below the license plate just adds a little more visibility to those folks behind you. Here's a photo of that. This is the lower rear uh, fender light. It serves as a daytime running light. That's what you're seeing now. But if I was to press the brake pedal, you would see this thing light up. So it acts as a lower third brake light as well. Okay, now back on this ram mount installation, what I've got attached to it is a quad lock wireless charging pad if you will you can hook your iPhone up to this and it will charge through the MagSafe similar to just laying your phone on your MagSafe next on, on your nightstand it will charge through this device and the whole device has I also purchased a vibration dampening element to it so it keeps the vibrations down and helps protect uh, your device but again, it charges your phone wirelessly. So my phone, when attached to this, 
wirelessly communicates to the bike through the Carlin Link dongle and it wirelessly charges as I drive on this quad lock wireless charging pad. Really like this. All right guys, here's that quad lock wireless charging station. You just mount your phone up here. It means you have to have a quad lock case on your phone for a mounting solution, but it mounts right up here and charges through the MagSafe capabilities of your phone. And as I said, it might be difficult to see, but I also purchased this device that came that with it that is a vibration dampening device. It has little rubber grommets down here that help smooth out those vibrations and keep any damage from happening to your phone. And of course it's all wirely connected. I've got it under wired under this plastic fascia here on the handlebar and then back to the appropriate place uh, near the battery. Part of that wireless pad installation included a connection front from the pad to the battery through a, a USB connector. I'll put a link to that and a picture of that on the screen. Unfortunately, it's under the seat too, so I can't show you. But it's an automatic switch sort of thing that when I turn the bike on, it powers this up. And when I turn the bike off, it turns this off. Next, for safety, I added some blind spot mirrors. Very cheap, little round mirrors you can put on the outside of your existing side mirrors that show you more of the surrounding on your side so you can see if cars are coming. It's not a blind spot monitoring system, but it does give you that visibility. Very inexpensive. They just stick on with tape and they've worked very well for me. I've got one on each mirror. And next, for organizational and storage purposes, I have some saddlebag organizers that Velcro into the door panel of each of the saddlebags and just have little mesh pockets where you can keep some stuff. That was a gift from Ed Macedo, another viewer of my channel who uh, got sent them uh, by accident and the company didn't need them back so he couldn't use them. He asked me if I wanted them. Thank you, Ed. He uh, sent them to me. Very nice of Ed. I'll show you a photo of these. Really great for organizing your saddlebag and keeping it clean, keeping things from rolling around in there. All right, and for my saddlebags, here are those organizers I spoke of. They just Velcro in so they can be removed if you're like, a, like at a hotel or something. You need to take them with you. Mesh bags and pouches, zippers. Holds really well in there. Helps organize your side trunk. Let's take a look at the one on the other side. Okay, very similar on the other side. Three pouches on this side, zippered or meshed. And I've got a little light attached to it in here, but it helps organize my saddlebag on this side as well. Next for safety, I have added uh, from a company called Guardian Angel, the Guardian Angel Light. It is really made for uh, bikers and joggers and uh, first responders to wear that uh, it's a light blinking device that normally attaches onto some sort of band or whatever but it also comes with an adhesive mount and very very strong magnets i put one on the trunk of my uh, bike here and i can turn it on i've got a red they make them in all different colors except for the police kind of colors but i have a red and white version and i uh, face the red outward and turn it on blinking during the day so that it blinks brightly during the day keeps me visible during the day and at night I'll just turn it on solid like a, a permanent third brake light up there. Just another thing for people coming up behind me to see me and make me more visible. And here's the Guardian Angel light. It comes off big heavy magnetic base as I said. There's the base that just adheres adhesive 3M tape to the trunk lid and it just, I and mean, that's not going anywhere. And so, as I said, it's a red light. I keep that on uh, during, uh, at night, so people can see me. It's a third brake light. Then I have it flashing during the day. Gets people's uh, attention better during the day. Uh, it also has that sort of turn signal look to it that I don't use. And then off. And then if you don't like red, you can turn it over, do the very same thing with white. And then if you're in a parade or something and you just want everything, you put the push the big button in the middle 
and everything blinks white and red. Anyway, safety device. Next is a device in the trunk, a light, a small light. And these are not made for motorcycles. They're just made for everyday use. But you buy them in packs of four. And they're little square LED lights that light up pretty well and are uh, rechargeable, USB rechargeable. So I just Velcroed one to the roof of my trunk because the trunks don't come with a light. You can buy one and install it from Honda if you'd like. But this was a quick and simple Velcroed solution for me that works. I'll show you that. Okay, and here is the lighting solution that I put up here. As it's just, as I said, just Velcro, heavy Velcro uh, to the top of my trunk lid here, and uh, it just turns on. And during the day, you can't really tell how bright it is, but it's fairly bright and USB rechargeable. Just like that. Also, for functionality, I purchased the front fender rear extender, and that just assembles into the back of the front fender, extending it down lower, and helps keep mud and dirt and gunk from flying up on my engine down there. I mean, the engine still gets a little dirty, but uh, not near as dirty as it did without that. So, really like that. Very simple, easy to install very nice device and guys there's a couple of things that i purchased for the bike but and i keep on the bike but they're not attached to the bike like an accessory but i'm i purchased them specifically for the bike the first one is from the company fantic their x8 apex tire inflator you guys, uh, if you watched that video recently of uh, Cruise Man and I fixing my tire, this is what I was airing it up with uh, after we plugged the, the hole. comes with a rubber hose. And this um, compressor unit takes air in. You can set it to a certain uh, air pressure and just hit go. And when it reaches that air pressure, it automatically turns off. So the rubber hose screws in there. And oh, by the way, it has an emergency flashlight that you can turn on right here. Chargeable by USB. Oh, that's US, USB-C out and US, sorry, USB-A out and USB-C in. And on the bike side, um, this end just simply rotates so you can screw it on the uh, valve stem. So that's pretty cool and works pretty well, to be honest with you. I keep that on the bike so that if any time I, on the road, need to add, add a little air, top off, or completely air up my tire, that comes with me and helps me do it from Fantic. And then from Skosh, I was talking about that pigtail on my bike that I permanently installed to the battery. Um, I have this Skosh 700A jump starter. You comes in this neat little kit. You can charge it up, stays charged for a good long time. Like I still have four bars, and it's been a while since I plugged this thing in. But it comes with the connections and regular jumper cables. But also comes with a connection that plugs into my bike. And uh, I just uh, hit boost, and then I can jump my bike if necessary. But it also has power outlets here so that you can charge things like your helmet or your phone if you need to while you're out on the road. Also has an emergency light. So those are two things I keep on the bike, bought for the bike. Help me out in bad situations. And there you go. All right, and the last thing that I added to this bike was the Traction Dynamics tip-over protection package, which includes two of these protective guards that go on your side view mirrors, very firmly attached by 3M tape and some sort of sealant. 
So if the bike falls over, it's going to hit this rubberized plastic stuff. Very durable. Scratch resistant, so if it scratches, you just kind of wipe it off and go about your business. That one for the mirror on each side. <clears throat> and then another one down here. This strip attaches the same way to your saddlebags, one for each side. Because if the bike is to tip over, it's going to hit this first instead of your saddlebag and hopefully save you from having to buy another saddlebag lid, a very expensive saddlebag lid. Again, this is in the category of insurance, similar to the belly pan underneath, just protecting my bike in the case something happens. Guys, I want to thank you for sticking with me through this somewhat long video. It's very difficult to get through everything quickly. So until next time, ride safe and God bless.